Hey everybody, class R, we're gonna talk about some phase shifts, also known as horizontal shifts. Share my screen, sure thing. Oh, I can make that look a little bit nicer, James. Okay, let's make this look less terrible, cool. So class R, putting it all together. So we're going to add in a phase shift. Phase shifts. Um, they're more generally called horizontal shifts, but specifically when we're talking about trigonometric functions, we often refer to them as phase shifts. I couldn't tell you why, but I know that's what we do. So I'm just going to come up with some examples. Um, actually, so let's let's start off with the idea here, and the idea is going to be that, I mean, basically just we're going to shift left or right, and we're going to then find the new five points accordingly. So let's start off with an easy example and then we'll kind of do some harder ones. So for example, I want to graph y equal to, let's say, I don't know, two sine of x plus pi over six. So this is going to shift everything left pi over six. The way I kind of think of this is the x values have to be pi over six less than they would have been to get the same angles. So normally, I would like to have my angle be, so I'm gonna call it my angle here. I want my angle to be, you know, pi over two, or, oh, sorry, I forgot zero, or pi, or three pi over two, or two pi. Because that's what we want to be taking sine of, right? Sine of zero is zero, sine of pi over two is one, and so on and so on and so on. In fact, right, we're gonna say that two times sine of our angle, sine of zero is zero, two times zero is two, sine of pi over two is one, two times, oh, sorry, two times zero is two, did I say two? two times zero is zero, my goodness. Sine of pi over two is one, two times one is two, sine of pi is zero, two times zero is zero, sine of three pi over two is negative one, two times negative one is negative two, and finally back all the way around one full um, period, sine of two pi is zero, two times zero is zero. The problem is our angle is everything we're taking sign of. So here our angle is not x, but x plus pi over six. So if I wanna know what the actual x value that I'm gonna graph on my x, y coordinate system is gonna be, well, I need to subtract pi over six from each of these, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Zero minus pi over six is negative pi over six. And you probably cannot see that very well at all. Let's zoom way in here. Yeah, that's much better. Um, pi over two minus pi over six. I wouldn't do it this way. What I would actually do is I'd say, this is my beginning point. I'd say my period is two pi. A quarter of my period is two pi over four, which is pi over two. And then I'd say, there's my beginning point. So my x sub zero is negative pi over six. And then my next point, I'm just gonna take my previous point and I'm gonna add on my quarter of a period. And you need a common denominator, that's gonna be negative pi over six plus three pi over six, which is two pi over six. My next important value, I'm gonna take my previous one, I'm gonna add on a quarter of a period. I know it's repetitive and monotonous, but that's what we're doing. My next one, I'm gonna take my previous one, five pi over six, I'm gonna add on another quarter of a period, which is pi over two, but I'm gonna think of it as three pi over six. Finally, my last one, I'm gonna take my previous one, eight pi over six, out of my period, my quarter of my period, and eight plus three is 11. Now I wanna point out, 11 pi over six is not the value of one whole period. One whole period is two pi, which is 12 pi over six. But the difference between your first value, negative pi over six, and your last value, 11 pi over six, if you look at the difference between those, 11 pi over six minus negative pi over six, minus and minus is plus, 11 plus one is 12 pi over six, which is two pi. So the difference between the beginning and the end one should be one full period's worth. So that's how I like to find these points. This first one is negative pi over six. This next one is two pi over six. Then the next one's five pi over six. The next one's eight pi over six. The next one's 11 pi over six. All of these I could have found by doing zero minus pi over six, pi over two minus pi over six, pi minus pi over six, but it's just kind of annoying. 
plus, especially when there's also a horizontal squash or compression or stretch, it gets even more challenging. So definitely doing it this way where you find your beginning point and then you just add on uh, a quarter of a period, a quarter of a period, a quarter of a period, a quarter of a period to find all the next points, I think is the easiest way to do it. So continuing on here, there's my five points, my five X values. There's my usual middle, top, middle, bottom, middle for sine. Now I'm going to try and graph it. So let's see here. So this is where things are a little bit dicey with the graph. So I'm going to go negative pi over 6. So pi over 6 to the left. That's my negative pi over 6. And then 2 pi over 6 to the right. Well, pi, 2 pi over 6 is twice as big as pi over 6. So I'm going to go essentially twice as much to the right. And then this length here, that is my one quarter of a period length, which means every other distance between quarter of a period should be the same. So this is where it gets a little bit challenging. We can do this and then make it like that, and then like that, and then like that. So each of those is another quarter of a period. You don't have to mark this off, but these lengths should look like they're about the same. It doesn't have to be perfect, just should be decent. So then two pi, the next one was five pi over six, and then a little eight pi over six, and then 11 pi over six. Each of these is three pi over six, which is pi over two away from the next one. Okay, and then finally, um, one, two, one, two. So sine starts at zero, the middle, and then goes up to the top, not here, at the next important next value, which is right over here, then back to the middle, then down to the bottom, then back to the middle. So that's what sine of, sorry, two sine of x plus pi over six would look like. And that's the general process, is that we, all the same steps, except before we start finding all these x values, we first find the first one by saying, well, how far left or right have I shifted? And there's actually an easy way of doing that. Let me just point out what it's going to be. So, um, let's, yeah, let's, I had graph paper here. Sorry. Cool. So, mm, do I have enough room here? Probably. Mm, I might just, we'll see. Yeah, we'll do a couple here and then we'll maybe go back. So let's say I want to graph something a little more challenging where we have also a, let's zoom in. Sorry. I know I'm, and I'm all over the place here. Sorry. So let's say we want to do and sine, let's do a cosine. So let's say we want to graph y equal to, sure, let's say cosine. I'm going to change up the period now this time as well. So let's, let's do one more without changing the period, and then we'll change the period. Let's say we want to do 2 cosine of x plus pi over, did I do a plus last time? I did do a plus. Let's do a minus. Yeah, sorry, let's make that a minus. Sorry, I know, I know. Pi over 3 plus 1. So we know that the amplitude is two and the vertical shift is up one. The horizontal shift, and again, that's a minus pi over three. So here's the easiest way of doing it. So in the previous one, what I could have done is I could have said the way I'm gonna find the horizontal shift is by setting what's inside the function equal to zero. Meaning if you just set that equal to zero and then solve for X, you're getting a negative pi over six. That means you're shifting pi over six to the left. So same deal here. If I just set x minus pi over three equal to zero, my shift is positive pi over three, meaning pi over three to the right. And that's actually my first important x value. So I like to say that my x sub zero is equal to pi over three. My period here isn't atypical, right? My coefficient of x is one. So my period is the usual two pi. My quarter period is gonna be two pi over four, which is pi over two. So now to find my x values, my beginning x value is pi over three. My next x value, x sub one is pi over three plus a quarter of a period, common denominators. I need a two pi over six plus a three pi over six to get a five pi over six. X sub two is gonna be 
previous value, five pi over six plus quarter of a period. I'm not going to like go back and forth between the and say my quarter of a period is three pi over six, right? Pi over two is equal to three pi over six. So instead of writing pi over two and then changing it, I'm just going to write plus three pi over six. That's going to give me eight pi over six. I don't want to reduce that fraction. I could, it's four pi over three. I'm not going to. My next value is going to be the previous one plus another quarter of a period, which is 11 pi over six. Finally, my last value is going to be my previous one plus, my, plus a quarter of a period, which is three pi over six, which is going to be 14 pi over six. Now I'm going to point out this reduces to seven pi over three because the difference between pi over three and seven pi over three is exactly six pi over three, which is two pi, which is one full period. You don't need to check this, but it's just nice to check and be like, oh yeah, we actually got one full period from beginning to end, so we're good. So let's see if I can make this look decent. <laughs> sure. So the problem here is that, wait, so this is pi over three, which is two pi over six. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to make that look like this. So let's see, that's my pi over three. But then the problem is each of them is three pi over six away. So like the next one's gonna be here and then like, yeah, here and then here. Yeah, that's fine. So all of my one, two, three, four, five points are equally distant apart from each other. But this distance here, it's going to go up, yeah. So this distance here is my quarter of a period, which is two pi, sorry, three pi over six. I and mean, you don't need to mark this. I'm just trying to make it clear. Um, oh, but I labeled it wrong, right? That's actually, sorry, it's actually this. <laughs> Terrible, James. So that's my three pi over six. I'm trying to kind of make it so that this distance here scales appropriately with that distance there. That distance from the origin to two pi over six is two pi over six. This distance from there to there is three pi over six. It's not an exact science, but I try to make it look okay. All right, cosine. We are going up one. And then we have an amplitude of two. So we're starting at the top at our first x value of two pi over six or pi over three. And then cosine goes to the middle and then to the bottom. Oh, I didn't label my y values. My middle value is one, my amplitude is two, so two above, two below. And then back of the next point to the middle, back of the last point to the top. I could label these, right? That's five pi over six. That's eight pi over six, which is four pi over three. That's the next one, which is 11 pi over six. And finally, 14 pi over six, which is seven pi over three. three. And it's going to look kind of like this. The nice thing about all these sine and cosine graphs is for the most part, they all have the same shape. We're just kind of shifting them around. All right. Let's make it even a little more complicated. Let's see how much time would that use up so far. OK. I can do like two or three more examples and just, just fine. So sometimes we like to also change the um, period. And let's go ahead and just scoot this down. That'll be easier. Nice. So to change the period, let's say we want to graph. Mm, sure. Let's try y equal to sine of, why not, 2x plus pi over 4. Yeah, that's fine. Minus 1. All right. So usual things. Amplitude is 1. Vertical shift down one or minus one period period doesn't care what's going on with this the period just cares about the coefficient of x here so the period is two pi divided by two which is just pi quarter period is pi divided by four the beginning or the phase shift again to find the phase shift and it's a little more complicated than here than it was in the previous one we're just setting the inside of the sine function or the argument of the sine or cosine function equal to zero. So we're going to set 2x plus pi over 4 equal to zero. This is almost always going to be a two-step process to solve. First, isolate the 2x or so subtract pi over 4 from both sides. So 2x equals negative pi over 4. And then divide both sides by this coefficient or multiply by its reciprocal. So we're going to get x equal to 
one half times negative pi over four. So our x zero is negative pi over eight. So we're gonna go starting pi over eight to the left. And then we're gonna find our other values. So x zero is negative pi over eight. X one is gonna be negative pi over eight plus my quarter period, which is pi over four. Common denominator, negative pi over eight plus two pi over eight, which is positive pi over eight. And then x sub two is gonna be the previous value pi over eight plus my quarter period, which is three pi over eight. My next value is gonna be three pi over eight plus a quarter period, which is five pi over eight. And finally, my last value is gonna be five pi over eight plus a quarter period, which is seven pi over eight. I'm gonna pause it for a second because I'm getting a phone call. Can I pause it? Sure, I can pause it. Well, I thought I paused my video, but I think I just paused the screen sharing. I undid it. I'll edit it. Anyway, so Ooh, dropping stuff everywhere. So as I was saying, we've got our five x values. Now we're just gonna put, I like to label the x-axis. Now again, I'm gonna point out. This first value is to the left of the origin, right? It's negative, so I gotta shift to the left. I also should mention, right? Adding pi over four here does not mean that pi over four is the amount we're shifting to the left. This two makes a difference. So that's why setting all this equal to zero is really the easiest way to figure out what your phase shift is gonna be. So we're gonna go pi over eight to the left, but notably the amount to the right is also gonna be the same. So if I just be like, if I just pick like this to be negative pi over eight, and then this, it can be positive pi over eight. The spacing will look right. And then that spacing should be how much to the next point. So that should be my three pi over eight. Essentially each mark here is a, is a pi over eight. And then five pi over eight. And then seven pi over eight. Okay, and then let's see, I've shifted down one. This one, so, I, so the labeling here is gonna kind of suck because I, I kind of shot myself in the foot here. So, so I'm gonna go down one. I'm going to draw in a different color just to kind of make sure things look different. So sine normally starts in the middle. And my, my amplitude is one. So sine starts in the middle here. So I'm down at negative one and then up as high as zero, down as high. Oh, it's actually more low. Sorry. I, that's not a point on my graph. Sorry. So middle, top, middle, bottom, middle, right? My middle is negative one. My top is zero, my low is negative two, my bottom. So I'm looking like this. So it looks like a sine graph, just stretched and shifted a bit. Let's do a few more examples. Let's do two more examples. We don't need to do a bajillion examples. But the idea is just, it's all the stuff we've done already, we're just adding in a phase shift. So yeah, we'll do two more examples. I think that'll be enough. All right, so let's try the following. That was a sign. Is that a sign? That was a sign. Let's do a cosine and another sign. Let's say we want to graph. Sure, let's try putting all the pieces together. Let's say we're going to do y equal to three cosine of two thirds x. Sure. So I have to think about it. Yeah, it should be fine. Um, plus, yeah, I like a plus. Pi over, sure, pi over six minus one. Okay. All the things. Ampli oh, let's make it a negative. Sure. Let's make it a negative. So you go sign two thirds x plus pi over six minus one. Amplitude is positive three. We're going to have a vertical shift of down one, and we're going to have a vertical flip, meaning instead of being top, middle, bottom, middle, top, it's going to be bottom, middle, top, middle, bottom. And then our period is going to be 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 2 thirds, which is equal to 2 pi times 3 halves, which is going to be 3 pi, or 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi. Quarter period is just three pi divided by four. My beginning point or my phase shift 
again, I'm just setting the argument of my trigonometric function equal to zero. So I'm going to set 2 thirds x plus pi over 6 equal to zero and solve. So I'm going to get 2 thirds x equal to negative pi over 6. Multiply both sides by 3 halves. So let's see, I end up getting x equal to negative 3 pi over 12, which reduces to negative pi over 4. And I'm going to point out here, right, um, I'm just calling this x sub 0 because that's what I like to call my first point. So my first nice x value is negative pi over 4. My next one is going to be negative pi over 4 plus my quarter period, 3 pi over 4 which is going to give me 2 pi over 4. You don't have to show all this work. Now you can just be like, I know that 2 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4 is going to give me 5 pi over 4. So my next point is going to be 5 pi over 4. So I'm always taking the previous value and adding a quarter period. x3 is going to be 5 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4, which is 8 pi over 4. And finally, the last one is going to be 8 pi over 4 plus 3 pi over 4, which is 11 pi over 4. If we check the difference, 11 pi over 4 minus negative pi over 4 is positive 12 pi over 4, and 12 pi over 4 is 3 pi, which is our period. So we, that checks out. Okay, so let's see here. So negative pi over 4, let's make this length negative pi over 4. And then the, the next point is 2 pi over 4. So if that's a 1 pi over 4 length, then I need a 1 pi, 2 pi over 4. Sorry, a 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4. So three of these is a quarter period. Uh, so, the, so the problem with that choice I've made here is that I don't have enough space, right? I need one, two. I guess I could do that. It's going to look kind of janky, but uh, sure. One, two, three. I don't love this choice that I'm making, but it's fine. I probably should have just made each of these shorter. Oh, well. So there's my last one there. Okay. So there. Let's, so before I actually write things on here, let's figure out where my graph is going to go so I don't kind of make the same mistake I made last time. So let's see, so I'm going down one. So there's my new middle line with a negative one. And then I'm going an amplitude of three. So I'm gonna be down as low as negative four and as high as one, sorry, zero, one, two. So as high as two. So there's my top, middle, bottom. Cosine starts at the bottom. Now I'm, be careful, I'm not starting here. I'm starting here because my first x value of negative pi over 4 is right there. And then my next x value is right there. So that's where my new middle is. The middle is not there. The middle is there. Next x value at the top. Next x value back at the middle. Yeah, this is going to look kind of terrible. Sorry for the terribles. Next x value down at the bottom here. Yeah, OK, sorry. Kind of blew it with the graph there. That happens sometimes. So then we just draw our usual upside down cosine shape. So it'll look like this. Okay, pray for me. That's not so bad. I've done worse things. Okay, don't ask me about that. Cool. That's not too bad. Um, there are five. Oh, and I guess I don't think you need to label these five points. Like you can label these x0, x1, x2, x3, and x4 if you like, or if you've written the value somewhere, or you could write, you know, you could really write 2 pi over 4, which I know reduces 5 pi over 4, 8 pi over 4, and yes, 11 pi over 4, if you really wanted to. I do like writing them on the x-axis, though, not like where the points are. All right, let's do one more example. Let's see if I can make it not too, too awful. So let's scooch this down here. Let's do, well, let's see, we just need a cosine one, so we'll do a sine one. Sorry, I'm trying to orient things here. Okay, let's scooch this down, All right? Okay, so let's try something like y equal to, sure, I like that. Mm, uh, yeah, I'll go a little off the charts here. 3 sine of, see, I want to make it a little bit different here. Yeah, we'll go a, we'll go a 4 thirds x minus 
pi over, let me think for a second here. Yeah, that'll be fine, sure. We'll do pi over six again, um, plus two. Okay, so amplitude's three again. We're gonna be up to our period is going to be two pi divided by four thirds, which is two pi times three fourths, which is six pi over four, which is three pi over two. Cool. Our quarter period is one fourth times three pi over two, which is three pi over eight. Mm. Okay. Phase shift. Set the insides of the sine function equal to zero. Four thirds x minus pi over six equals zero. Really want to point out the phase shift is not going to be pi over six to the right. It would be if it was x minus pi over six, but that four thirds is going to change the scope of the phase shift. I do know it's going to be to the right though, because it is something is something with x minus a number. So I know it's going to shift me to the right. I just don't know how much. So I've got four thirds x equal to positive pi over six, multiply both sides by three fourths. And it's gonna be not very lovely here. I'm gonna get x equal to three pi over 24, which is equal to pi over eight. And so now I'm gonna be smart about where I place things. Cause I know that my phase shift is pi over eight, which is to the right. And if I put it here, if that length is one pi over eight's worth, and my quarter period is three pi over eight, then the next has to, that has to be three, three. Yeah, I just, that's gonna be a little too far. So I'm gonna be a little bit more judicious here. I'm gonna say that this is a pi over eight, kind of like a half of a hash marks worth. So there's my beginning point, but my x sub zero, which is pi over eight. My x sub one is gonna be pi over eight plus three pi over eight, which is four pi over eight, which is pi over two. So I'm essentially gonna go three of these half lengths. So one, two, three, so I'm gonna be right there. So essentially each quarter period is one and a half marks. So I know the next one should be here and then here and then here. I do like to try and space them out equally because they all should be equally spaced out. Here, the spacing between your first and the origin should not necessarily be equal because that distance is just how much you've shifted. Um, X sub two is gonna be four pi over eight plus three pi over eight, which is seven pi over eight. X sub three is gonna be seven pi over eight plus three pi over eight is 10 pi over eight. And lastly, x sub four is gonna be 10 pi over eight plus three pi over eight, which is 13 pi over eight. Once again, if we look at the difference between these, 13 pi over eight minus pi over eight is 12 pi over eight, which reduces to three pi over two, which is indeed our period. So everything checks out nicely. All right, so we've got our five, our five points. I'm just gonna, and we're gonna go up to, see, so yeah, I'm just call this x sub zero, x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, x sub four. You can certainly label them with the actual values. And then we're doing up to, and we've got a amplitude of three. So sine's gonna start in the middle. Oh, sorry, so, sorry, there's two, and then up three at a height of five, down three at a low of negative one. So we start in the middle right there at our first x value, not necessarily on the y-axis not really ever on the y-axis if we've had some sort of phase shift. And then sine goes up to the top. Next one back to the middle. Next x value down to the bottom, which is there, not on the x-axis, which I know is tempting. And then finally, last one should be back to the same height that we started at. If you started in the middle, you should end in the middle. If you started at the top, you should end at the top. If you started at the bottom, you should end at the bottom. And finally, we try and draw a sign. Ooh, we try. All right, and that's it. I hope this has been illuminating. I'll see you all in class. Again, that was class, that was class R. See you all later.